What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. Up until five weeks ago, I was a drum teacher, and up until five weeks ago, I did play gigs with bands, but all that's gone now. Before we start the video, I would like to thank my newest patrons over at my Patreon. Uh, thank you, Grant Manwarren, and thank you, Till. Thank you very much. Quick update for all of you who have ordered t-shirts, uh, please be patient. Teespring is really, really behind, and you know, for obvious reasons. So please be patient, those shirts are coming. So quarantine video number 11 is going to be starring all of your favorite heavy metal drummers, favorite heavy metal drummer, the man with the coolest nickname in all of music, the Atomic Clock, Gene Hogland. There's going to be a certain age of viewer that's going to know Gene Hogland best as the drummer from Death Clock. You know, Gene Hogland is Pickles. Shout out Dr. Roxo. But if I were to sit here and list his whole discography, it would take 20 minutes. The guy's played with everybody. I know Gene Hogland best from the stuff from like Strapping Young Lad. Uh, I go out of my way to listen to everything that Devin Townsend does because that Canadian alien is always coming up with just the craziest off-the-wall shit. I'm, all, I'm, I'm here for most of it. Actually, lately, uh, I just got turned on to the record he did with Testament called Demonic. Uh, that record, I actually got turned on to that just a few days ago, and man, that record's amazing. That record's kind of like the record Metallica still wish they could make. So, before we get into the video, please, everyone, uh, go check out my Patreon. Uh, please go check out my merch page. Let's get into Gene Hoglan uh, playing with Testament, playing True American Hate. So, right off the bat, you are seeing that Gene, and he's very famously an open-handed player. Meaning that he plays on the right-handed drum set, and he plays with his left hand on the hi-hat, you know, here. We're going to talk about later how important I think that is as a technique. Hoglin's a big boy. Ah, the skank beat. You know, I, just because of listening to Slayer so much over the years, I always associate that with Slayer. And if you know anything about Gene Hoglin, he used to be Dave Lombardo's drum tech. And he would, you know, uh, check the drums every night for Dave Lombardo. And from what I have kind of seen through my research before this video is Dave Lombardo kind of sees Gene Hoglan as kind of an influence and was really inspired by a lot of the stuff that he does. That is the skank. I just, it's not that I, I learned it, but I, I finally played the skank starting about two years ago with the metal band that I'm always talking about. The guitar player like demanded it. He was like, look, you gotta have to, you're gonna have to play this fucking groove. I call that groove a triple time groove. No one else calls it that. I have a lot of uh, uh, th things that I call stuff that's not, you know, quote unquote correct. But I call it triple time. And here's why. And we're going to do a little education time, kiddies. We're going to learn how to do the skank today. Uh, like, you know, we think double time and we think one and two and three and four and, right? We call it double time because we're playing twice the amount of uh, snare drum notes. Uh, you, from your usual two and four. So what's going on here? I call it triple time. It's not really that, the skank. What you're doing there is you're playing the, you're playing 16th notes on the right hand, and then you're playing the one and two and three and four and on the bass drum, and then your back beat, if you want to call it that, is the E's and the U's. One E and a, you know, your snare drums on a one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And man, it, it's like, I guess it's like a precursor to blasts. And I'm sure we're going to see a blast today because, you know, Gene Hogland, you know, master of the blast beat. Uh, it, it, man, when you play that, it really makes the song move and it gives us this frantic feel. That's what you're hearing right here. <laughs> Lost the stick. Ha <laughs> ha, and it does not matter 
what he did right there. I say this in lessons all the time. Sometimes being a good musician uh, uh, involves the art of covering your ass, making a mistake, dropping a stick, but being able to uh, save it and, 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 you know, escape the, the mistake. And he dropped a stick right there, and uh, I want to go back there. He dropped a stick there, and you couldn't, you couldn't tell. If you weren't watching him, you wouldn't know. Yep. <laughs> Did not miss a beat. That is, that's high quality professional. That's professional grade right there. Man, playing open handed like this is just such an intelligent way to play. We're going to really talk about that later. Blast beats. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that is the, the Mountain Dew Baja Blast beat. Gene Hogland is all of the things that I like about a metal drummer in one thing. A lot of people overemphasize his blast beats, and you know, that's just YouTube shred culture. This guy's super musical. You know, he's playing, you know, fast things, but his breakdowns have a lot of groove to them as well. That, that that thing right there, it wasn't quite a herta, but you know that like, like sweep. You know it was like a almost like a marching band sweep where you do like a double on a drum, a, a, a single and a single here off a double stroke to doom to doom. That was cool. There's no wasted motion. You know, unfortunately, and I know I'm going to catch a lot of shit about this, Hoglin has not, I mean, I guess Death Clock's big, but you know, they're kind of a joke band. They're really good, but like, Gene Hoglin's never been on like that platinum selling gigantic release. It's so depressing that like Lars Ulrich has all those platinum records. And you know what? I'm going to go, this, this channel is kind of becoming the... The Lars Ulrich trash video guy, and I'm cool with it. But it's such a bummer that, like, he's on all these big, huge records, and not enough people know about Hoglin. He's still kind of a, a, a best kept secret. You're watching this, and you know Gene Hoglin because you know, but out in the world, he's not been on that big release. Although that demonic is a great record. I don't know if he played this originally, because I think he's only on one Testament record. I could be wrong. Skank. Yeah, man, like the skank just makes the, the, the mosh pit out of control. You have such control over the crowd as a drummer. Okay, so let's talk about, I think the biggest thing we're going to get out of this video is, first, Gene Hoglin, you know, the man. He's the atomic clock. The, the coolest nickname ever. He plays open-handed. I think that open-handed is a 21st century way to play. Now, I know he's older and he's been doing it forever. Uh, that reminds me of the Camco pedal thing. i got to talk about the Camco pedal. Remember to remind me to talk about the Camco pedal thing. Uh, he's playing open-handed, and I think it's the most advantageous way to play. Now, I don't know if he's right-handed or left-handed. Most of the time, uh, you see open-handed drummers, they're left-handed. I teach all of my left-handed drummers to play like this. But if you're a right-handed drummer and you're starting right now, I suggest do this at at the beginning of you of your playing. It's going to be a little bit harder because you are left-handed. You know, you'll be a left-footed lead. But what playing open-handed does, if you're a right-handed drummer, is that it makes your your weakest hand your best hand because you're always leading with it. And then you become closer to ambidextrous. And if you, you know, if you study drums, if you're a drummer, you know we all aspire to be ambidextrous. Again, I don't know what hand he actually is, you know, like what hand he throws the ball with. But if you've noticed, he has led with his right hand or his left hand on all these drum fills. It's made him more ambidextrous. I play traditional cross-handed, and it is such an old-school way to play. 
I think that if you are beginning or if you are early enough in your career that you can make that change, I preach open-handed. It is the new 21st century way to play drums. Gene Hoglin was kind of like, who was doing it before him? You know, you think him and Carter Beaufort. Dom Famulero plays open-handed as well. Uh, Harry Murray kind of does. You know who he is. Yeah, like that last drum fill, he was like leading with his left hand. Good, good old fashioned 16th note running on the, on the double bass, two and four. This is just like a, a grab bag of everything that you want out of a badass heavy metal drummer. And again, I call him, he's the heavy metal drummer's drummer. And you know, he hasn't really, he's only played a blast once. Let's talk about his equipment. He's very famous for playing Camco pedals. We can get so caught up in gear, and especially with the arms race that is extreme metal, and uh, everyone thinks that they have to have like a Pearl Eliminator or an Iron Cobra or like a longboard axis pedal. I've had students, you know, I've had like double bass students. And again, I'm no double bass player, but I can play it well enough to teach it. Uh, they'll they'll come in and you know they're not getting the speed up because there's no need to play double bass at 80 beats per minute. If you're gonna play double bass, it's got to be fast. And I've had over the years students be like, well, you know, if I had like one of those Axis long pedals or or long, you know long boards, or uh, you know if I had like a Tama you know, Iron Cobra, I'm like, dude, I bring him up all the time. I'm like Gene Hoglin plays with garbage pedals. Those Camcos, he doesn't. He plays the Camco, and I think it's the Cam Drive. It's not a chain. They're '70s pedals. I don't even know who made them, and they're kind of like a Speed King. I've played one before, and they don't feel amazing. But for whatever reason, he loves them. He gets this extreme speed with what some people would say is one of the junkiest pedals that was ever made. Like the Speed King's really awful, uh, and the Camcos are just a. It's not a. It's not a high technology device. You know, when you compare them to like Axis Axis pedals, which are made from uh, aircraft aluminum, he gets that. And I think he plays in uh, untied combat boots, if I'm not mistaken. I got a story about uh, Testament at the end of this uh, end of this uh, video. Uh, it's it's a downer. Um, don't get caught up on your gear. Don't ever blame your gear. Remember, if you think that you can go faster with a more expensive, fancy pedal, remember he plays Camcos. Like all those extreme as like, oh, you know, like what setting is your Iron Cobra on? Who cares? Play the bass drum. He has such an efficiency of movement. You know, he doesn't have a lot of histrionics in his body. There's no real time for it. Beautiful technique. Dairy Queen Cherry Blast. Back to the skank. I live for breakdowns. I love that lick that he keeps that he's he's making that almost a theme. Woo daddy if you hear them double bass chops. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we got to go back to that. Uh, that skank right there, you know, what I showed you was the basic skank. Let's go back there for the ending of this song. That's some fireworks. He throws in some, like, 30-second notes on the on the double bass. Woo-hoo! Man, that's almost, that's so violent, he could almost get arrested for starting a riot. Like, you hear that in a mosh pit, you're going to, you're going to smash someone's face in. 
Gene Hogland, man, the Atomic Clock. Every uh, all your favorites, heavy metal drummers' favorite drummer is Gene Hogland. Again, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit about saying that he's not as big as he should be, and he's not. Like, go through his discography, and none of those records were, you know, quote unquote, big selling records. Maybe Demonic was. That was came out in '97. That record's great. I just got into it, and it's a, and it's a great record. Here's my real quick testament story. Uh, I used to work at a metal bar. If you've watched the Vinnie Paul video, I tell a story about being a bartender at the at the metal bar. And our shady cook somehow had like booked testament. I don't even know. I don't. It's so long ago, and it was those were very hazy days, if you know what I'm talking about. But for some reason, like the cook at this bar, like somehow got testament there. And like Testament showed up, and they needed their uh, uh, their deposit, and this bar was ran by uh, like the shadiest of all bar owners. That guy, oh my God, he was a criminal, shady asshole. And like somehow, like I was really fired up because Gene Hoglund was on tour with Testament at that at that time, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to get to see Gene Hoglund. You know, I've got full access at this bar. I'm going to go meet Gene Hoglund. And they, sh the manager got out of the tour bus, came in, asked for the, the, the deposit, which was probably, you know, probably substantial. But we had big bands like that at this place before. For some reason, that shady-ass bar owner was like, no, you're going to get your money afterwards. Man, Testament got back in the, in, the, in the tour bus and just jetted and left. And it was a disaster of a night. And I didn't really care about the loss of income. I, I, I cared about the loss of getting to see Gene Hoglund because I was going to be on stage. I was going to leave my post and go check and, 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 you know, study this guy. So what we saw today, open-handed playing. If you are a beginner drummer, I so suggest playing open-handed. It just makes the drum set more uh, accessible. Like when I'm playing open, when I'm playing crossed and I'm doing, and I want to go from like the snare drum to a tom or over here, have to make this awkward move ugh, here, right? And it's a thing you got to practice. Open handed, dude, we're here. And my, you know, and if you notice, like when he would go from his hi hat to his ride, it was like boom is boom, right? Instead of this and this move, right? It's the, the 21st century way to play open-handed and as far as i'm concerned uh, as far as i know anyway gene hogland was a was a was a, a pioneer in open-handed drumming so look man pickles can really play the drum set dude if you just know him from death clock death clock's cool it's cool man i love that i love that show that you know those songs are ridiculous and amazing Go check him out in Strapping Young Lad. Go check him out in, uh, for the, on that Testament Demonic. Just check out anything that Gene Hoglan is on because you're going to be influenced by what your favorite drummer is influenced by. And if you eventually want to be one of those influencers, you got to keep practicing until it's easy.